Hello, my name is Pierre Charbonneau. I'm a senior IT consultant and the author on Java e support patterns at blogspot.com. Today's video will basically show you how to perform a JVM HIPDOM analysis and it will precisely show you uh, actually how we're able to pinpoint the root cause of an Apache Open JP memory leak. If you are interested, the full article is also available from the blog link that you will see also from this video. So now let's see how this whole analysis process is working. So what you see here is basically the, the result of the HIPDOM analysis loading process from the IBM Support Assistant Workbench. We're actually using Memory Analyzer 2 from that workbench, but you could also be using the standalone version of MATH as well. So what we did basically was to generate a JVM HIPDOM following the discovery of a memory leak from our production environment and we used a JMAP utility to do that and it did generate a heap file at about 1.5 gig that's why you see this file heap.bin and then we loaded the heap dump file from the IBM memory and diagnostic tool which is pretty much the same version as MAT. So the first thing that you will notice is a summary of your heap dump right because the heap dump is basically a snapshot of your java heap at a specific time so it's giving you detail of all the active objects at the time of the capture so let's look at our heap dump so as you can see this the size of the heap dump is 1.5 gig or the java heap itself because we have a java heap set up at 2 gig and at the time of the problem where the capture we had our gen space at about 1.5 gig uh, plus some of the object from the young gen space, so that's why you see about 1.5 gig of footprint. So Matt will initially show you a summary such as the size, number of classes, objects, right, class loader as well. And then typically the first thing you will want to do is go to the leak suspect report. Okay, that report is pretty useful. That's what we'll generate right now. It's basically going to show you. Uh, a summary of the top contributors of the memory footprint. So let's see what we got. You see? So from the 1.5 gig, we had two problem suspect or leak suspect that Matt was able to identify. Okay? One with a footprint, as you can see, around this and around this, about 600 megs for this one and 243 megs for the other one. Then if you scroll down, you will see from the analysis that we did from our production environment, what we found is the problem suspect number one. As you can see, we had about 600 megs of footprint, or almost 40% of the entire Java, Java heap or the old gen space, accumulated in one instance only of a link list. So that one is quite suspicious, right? 600 meg, only one instance of a link list, right? So this is why the leak suspect is good at to highlight you these top contributors. Now, how can you deep dive further into an analysis? Well, look, the referencing here is in the application class loader, right? In the event you're familiar with class loader, let's say you have multiple Java e applications, they will have their own class loader. So that's why you will see that like this. Because typically your class are loaded to a class loader, so man will be able to detect the referencing classes to a given class loader. So here's the memory address of this object. So what we're going to do is basically copy paste this address. And there's a function in the tool called find object by address, as you can see here. Click on this. You basically put the address of the class loader. You see? And it was going to show you. Here's another tab, and then you you will be able to drill down into the classes and referencing and, and everything. So in this case, as you can see, this class loader at this memory address is referencing about 600 megs of heat, right? Which was basically exposed to the leak suspect. So let's drill down. This is outgoing references that we're looking at right now. Outgoing, not incoming. Outgoing means are basically you're drilling down from one object to its uh, reference, references. Like let's say that object has a field or a, a vector or a, let's say a hash map of object, right? Sure. So that outgoing allows you to drill down, right? So outgoing, drill down in the object dependencies. Incoming is when you want to go back in the tree and see, okay, this object 
who is the referencer of this guy, right? So right now we're going to look at the outgoing dependency so we can identify the culprit of object or the leaking object. So first you want to filter by the top, right? So as you can see, the class order obviously will have some structure of classes as you can see here. Now you just need to expand that. And look, let's see what we found here, you see? So that was kind of a surprising finding when we did that analysis. So we can see a mix of WebLogic object in there because we're using uh, Oracle WebLogic for our application. It's a portal application. What we found is one instance of PC, it's called PC Registry, you see, from com Apache Open GPA, right? Remember the title of this whole memory analysis, GPA, which stands for Java Persistent API. Well, that's what we use in our application to do the database transaction, right? We use that uh, Open JPG for the mapping and database mapping. Um, so we use that framework uh, to do that type of um, SQL queries against our database. So it, it, that was quite surprising, right? We found one instance of PC registry, as you can see, it's almost using 600 meg of memory. So using Magic and again, continue to drill down. And what we found is this, you see this, this class in OpenPG has, has a field called listeners. It's pretty much a link list, you see? So now we get a good correlation, right? From the report, link list, as you can see. Now we're about to find that link list, right? And it, a link list is basically when you drill down further, you'll be able to see next, 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 right? So at some point, um, what we're able to see, I'm not going to show you all the code because it's proprietary, but at this point, we were able to drill down into the dependencies. And basically what this structure is, is, is keeping uh, basically uh, all the detail or cache of all your queries and metadata definition, right? Especially if you're familiar with Open PGA, but that data is static in nature, right? Like the metadata is static in nature. So why are we leaking metadata, right? Why is this data structure growing over time? So the heap dump analysis did allow us to pinpoint that the actual leak or the primary leak is is due to that data structure accumulating in the PC registry from the Apache OpenPG work. So that's what we're able to achieve with the actual heap dump analysis. As you can see, it's very powerful, right? It's, it's allowed you to, and then uh, assuming this is the application code, you'll be able to pinpoint exactly uh, or what type of object, right? And then, but sometimes heap dump analysis is not enough by itself to pinpoint the ultimate root cause. In this case, what it's telling us is that we know which object is leaking. That was the primary objective. Now, question is, why is our application or framework leaking at the first place, right? Well, the heat analysis won't necessarily give you all the details. It will give you the object type, but then you will need to do your own due diligence to pinpoint the root cause. So let me show you what we did next. So after we found the leak in that structure, since OpenPG is an open source framework, we had to look at the source, you see? What you see here is the open source, is the source code of this class, PC registry of that version. And here's the field, you see? Register class listener. That basically field is used to register class listeners. Um, when using PG, right, so you want to create entity, uh, entity manager instances, you first have to initialize a factory and then create entity ma ma manager to run your business SQL, right? Well, this class is keeping a static cache of such listeners. Listeners, you see, that fill, and you see, that's the one, you see? Math is quite good at showing you exactly the field name. So when you have access to the source, you can do a straight correlation. This is very powerful, right? Now, why is this data structure leaking? Well, there is a remove register, obviously, as you can see here, to unregister. So what we did next was to review the documentation. You see, that's what the heap dump won't give you. So by removing the documentation, what we realize is that the when we're using the factory, basically the entity manager factory to create instances, our application code was actually not calling the close method. You see, if you're familiar with the GP specification, you should know that when you create a factory instance 
unless you're caching this in a static manner via singleton pattern, you need to call the close method, right? The close method is going to dispose these object metadata. Otherwise, you'll be leaking this data structure, which is exactly what the heap dump is showing us. We're leaking the data structure. So, after we found this, we look at the code, this code, this code, then we went back to the application code, and then we realized that our application was creating new instances of the factory entity manager factory over and over and over without invoking the close method, which is responsible to remove the listener object, right, from this data structure. So that's the root cause. The solution was to basically create a singleton or static instance of the factory, ensuring that we get only one copy of it, right, as opposed to leaking that data. So that's how we implemented. And after we did that, we saw pretty major improvement, right? No, no longer any leak and no longer footprint. Even we took a heap dump after the, the fix and we noticed now that data structure listener was like down to uh, even like one meg or two, right? So, and was not growing over time. So that's the root cause and, and I hope you did appreciate, right? Because you can see that investigation, it did not take that much time. Once you're getting familiar with the two leak suspect, some of the concept like outgoing and coming references, you will see it's very powerful. It allows you to deep dive into the object. Obviously you need to know your framework code, you need to know your application code in other, so for you to draw some correlation, but the tool by itself is very powerful to allow you to do that type of profiling and memory footprint analysis to eventually pinpoint the root cause of your problem. So I hope you did appreciate that uh, tutorial regarding the uh, MAT and JPA memory leak. I will get back, don't worry, with a lot more videos on heap dump, I have a lot more tutorials on the same and I'll also be providing some uh, tutorial on how to investigate memory leak on a Java heap site as well. So uh, I hope you appreciate this video and have a good day. Thank you.